Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now a couple of years ago I made a video called Gaming on the $1.50 graphics card which cost me roughly £1.25 here in the UK. Today I have bought another super cheap GPU. I originally intended to buy something a little more expensive but I couldn't pass up on a deal like this. And I went and purchased this. This is the Radeon HD 5570 from AMD. It released in 2010 and I paid just £1.50 for it, which is roughly two American dollars at the time of recording, of course. Now, back in 2010, the HD 5570 was a £79 or $79 solution that sat in between the HD 5450 at £50 or dollars and the 5670, which retailed for £100. Today, I thought we'd take a look back at this budget card, see what it can do, as well as try and overclock it a little bit to see what sort of results we can get. So the 5570 is a half height card and was released in a GDDR5 version, though the Sapphire model we have here is the DDR3 version, which may limit the performance in comparison. Consuming just 45 watts and a full load, this low profile graphics card features a 650 MHz core clock and 800 MHz memory clock, with Sapphire recommending a 400 watt power supply, though I expect you'd have no trouble running this on much less. The price I paid was a lot less than average, with most on offer on eBay for at least £20, and for some reason eBay US is on a bit of a mad one when it comes to the prices. If we compare this 5570 to the HD 2600 XT, the card I bought for £1.25 or $1.50 a while back, then the performance increase I'd say is definitely worth the extra 25 pennies, at least on paper. But how does this thing do in the real world? Well it's time to put this card to the test and jump into a few games. Because this supports DirectX 11, the sky is the limit. Well, actually the VRAM is the limit, but let's start off with a favourite of mine, Bioshock Infinite. Forget about 1080p in today's video because it's not and never really has been ideal for this card, but 720p is where this thing still shines. Here at 720p with the low preset, the game averages 52 frames per second. Those 1% and 0.1% lows of 37 and 32 indicate a smooth overall experience, as those lower two numbers are quite close together. The average was taken from this level and the one previous combined, with a mix of outdoor and indoor gunplay, though the frame rate didn't actually differ too much regardless of location. In Dota 2 I set the game to the fastest preset. We could have turned things up a little but honestly this was the best way to play that guaranteed no lag or stutter. Well ok maybe there were a few frame dips here and there though there was nothing that hindered my gameplay experience in any way with the average staying at well above 100 outside of recording the footage here. Even the fairly modern and demanding Dirt 4 is playable on the 5570, at the very low settings of course. I completed the initial tutorial race here as well as a competitive event with numerous cars on the track and 38 came back as the average. If you wanted to turn things up a little to low, expect 20 to 25 frames per second which may be playable to some but it isn't ideal. Over in New Vegas and we were able to crank things up to high with a 1360 by 760 resolution. Very high caused a few more performance issues, but high settings with AA and AF enabled kept us fairly close to 60 frames per second, with the frame drops occurring thanks to those little sand tornadoes. I can't remember what you call them, but walking through them makes performance tank. Another more modern title that ran on my £1.50 GPU was Overwatch. Yes, the footage you see is from a bot match, but the recorded frame rate figures are from an online game. With 41 frames per second at the low 720p preset and 100% resolution scaling, I'd say this 5570 handled the game pretty well, especially considering it's the DDR3 variant. To round off I tried another two newer releases, starting with The Witcher 3. It's a great game but it won't run on this card or a lot of older cheaper cards to be honest, even at the lowest settings and resolution. It was worth a shot and to be honest I didn't expect success here, but what about Fortnite? 
Well, surprisingly, despite having to turn things all the way down to low at 720p, we were able to keep 100% resolution scaling, or whatever it's called in this game, and the game ran with around 40 to 45 frames per second on average, which was a surprisingly decent experience with minimal lag and stutter. Now, most of the gameplay and benchmarks captured here were during gameplay scenes that were sort of in the middle of nowhere and not too near crowded town areas, though the frame rate didn't really drop too much and it's a playable experience no matter where you are on the map if you don't insist on having to have 60 fps. But what about the overclocked results? Can this Redwood based budget GPU be tweaked to play our game selection a little better? Well the max overclock in Afterburner was 700MHz on the core clock and 900MHz on the memory clock. With both of these speeds applied I jumped back into the same games and didn't see too much of an increase, though there were some slight improvements as seen by these figures. For the price I paid, which was admittedly a very lucky deal, this card is a great choice for you 720p gamers out there who haven't updated your game library in a while. As a half height GPU it's small and power friendly too, so it would fit right in within a home theatre setup. Don't pay anyone this much for one though, or this much, and you won't be disappointed. This 5570 was the middle of the road choice among the sub $100 or pounds category of graphics cards in 2010, and these days it can still game to a certain extent, even at 8 years old, and yes it will still handle some of those modern releases like Fortnite as well. Thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, budget GPU video. As I said before I intended to do something a little more expensive today, but as always, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, leave a dislike on it if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.